The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the October 17th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Now is not too soon. 877-927-6648. If you can't phone in, well, you can always dial a friend. I mean, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Just inside that uh, subject heading, please put radio show question, and we will get to your request. And, of course, well, inside the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Let's Show. Right now, the Dow trading up 21 points, 22,978 is what she's printing. Got to 23,002, I believe, was the interest session high thus far. S&P up a point and a half. 25.56 is her number. NASDAQ is flat. Russell 2000 basically flat. Semis are off four points. We'll call that, uh, what will we call that? Three tenths to the downside. Uh, everything is to the downside. Uh, Tranny's uh, putting the pedal to the metal down 45 points. They are the ones that gave the topping signal on Friday. So it looks like they have lower to go. Gold is down 16 buckaroonies. That's one and a quarter percent. Silver's off nearly 2% or 33 pennies. Lightsweet crude down 7 tenths percent. That would be 35 cents. Leading the charger to the upside dollar-wise It is Granger WW worldwide. That's up nearly 16 bucks or 9%. Biogen, A to B equals CD to the upside. It's taken on a swing point with volume up 3.6% or 12 bucks. United Health. I believe that's also taken out a swing point, 4.7 million shares thus far, up 11 bucks or nearly 6%. Gravity, that gravity continues to fly high, up 25%. That's up nearly 11 bucks. AutoZone in the zone, up $8 and change. Fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief. It is not down 7.5% or 8 bucks. A badger meter, badger meter, down nearly 7 bucks or 13%. Goldman Sachs down 5. Uh, Tyler Technologies off 2% or 4 bucks. We have things to look at, of course. I want to look at what you want to look at. What is it that you want to look at? Should we look at what is really kind of a cool set of charts out here? I think the answer to that is absolutely, Steve-O. What is it that could be so cool that we would go take a look at? If we go take a look at each of these four indices, they each provide us with some really cool, important pieces of information. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, that's the chart to your very left. Next to that, NASDAQ Composite. We've been taking a look at this pattern here for the last several days. That pattern meaning we have price that has moved higher, higher closing highs, higher intraday highs, yet it's advanced decline oscillator well below the zero line. The reading on it right now is minus 69.83. Well, not to be undone, you've got the Dow at a new all-time high, if we were to close here right now. And its advanced decline oscillator reading also below zero. It, too, has been moving higher with a declining tops advanced decline oscillator reading. Hmm, something to think about. Now, on top of that, you got the New York Stock Exchange. It is also doing the same. All three 
as we say right now, being 111 in the afternoon, each of them have advanced decline oscillator readings below zero. This is the area where if the sellers have control, this is where they're supposed to have control. Now, in the case of the New York Stock Exchange and the Dow, they both would need follow through tomorrow. If you get a close below today and tomorrow you close back above it, well, sellers really never had a chance out there. They never were in control. We can only go with the meaning that we have now, and that is that across the board here, believe it or not, and it's subtle. It's no longer subtle because it's now ingrained into your imagination. You have sellers that are in control as of 111 in the afternoon. Uh, who else is out there communicating that to you? Now, the other chart, which is the S&P 500, unfortunately, I don't have the advanced decline data, so I can't provide you with advanced decline oscillator reading. But what we do take a look at inside the S&P 500 is your friend and mine, and that is the spot volatility index. That's what's at the bottom of the screen down there. And what we know right now is we're trading at uh, 1030. 1030 as the price point. It's 112 in the afternoon. And the 50-day exponential moving average is priced at 1042. Now, if ever there could be a signal, I don't know if it's going to end the day like this, but if in fact the spot volatility index closes above 1042, and the advanced decline oscillator readings inside the New York Stock Exchange and the Dow go ahead and join that which we have taken a look at inside the NASDAQ composite, very likely what we've got is an absolute sell signal message out here. Now, we'd like a little bit more, but uh, that's just because we'd like a little bit more. But that is something. That is what you should be paying attention to for the rest of the day. The rest of the stuff that we're going to look, you can turn off the screen if you, no, nah, you don't because you know there's other things that you want to look at. Like you're going to say, Steve, well, what's going on with Goldilocks or silver or the yen or something along those lines or anything that you want to take a look at. But to me, these are the most important. Now, the cool thing is, is that the spot volatility index can close above 1042, and we won't have a rate of change in excess of 10% out there. And so once you get above the 50-day, by the way, for those of you that are new time, new time, new time listeners, new listeners to the show out here, that 50-day is a real critical level. When you have the spot volatility index close above it, that's where the real price carnage or damage, it can be quick, but that is where the real price damage is typically done inside of the S&P 500. Once you stay below the 50-day, that's the yellow line on the very bottom right-hand portion of my screen, uh, there's really not a whole lot of damage that can really occur. And hence, you can see the S&P 500 has been moving higher ever since the last time that we got back below. It was on September the 11th out here. And it's just simply moved like a cow higher. I don't even know what the heck that means. So this is the chart to be paying attention to. Of course, we can go take a look at market breadth inside the S&P 500, and we'll see that we do have that little bearish crossover. You've got 149 issues on a 60-minute basis, trading above the box and 219 below. Could it be, Steve-O? Could it really be this easy in trying to identify a short-term market top? And the answer is, it is. Take a look at the NASDAQ market breadth. It, too, has a bearish crossover. 35 above, 40 below. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. You ready? Right. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Folks, so uh, what's it mean if the advanced client oscillators do not finish below zero for the New York Stock Exchange for the uh, Dow? And you have the uh, spot volatility index that closes below the 50-day exponential moving average. Yeah, very simple. You do not have a topping confirmation out there. Uh, so that's why you want to go ahead and pay attention. I had a request that came in yesterday. I apologize. I don't recall who sent in the request and the email got deleted. But the request was, how come I didn't spend any time, in essence, um, uh, how come I didn't spend any time on taking a look at the October 87 crash? Everybody was a big hubba baloo yesterday out there. And, you know, how, and the reason that I thought about doing that during the segment that I do with Tom, but there was more pertinent information I thought that I could share. So in essence, what do I mean by that? Why, why didn't I really spend a whole lot of time on that? And I did have something to go, and I'll show you what it, uh, what it, what it is. Uh, and it is as a follow. So there's a pattern that is a, uh, been present at the beginning of every single bear market, at least those that I can go back to from 18, God, 1865, 1886, somewhere in the 1800s out there. I, eh, brain, brain fart. I can't remember exactly which year, but it goes back a long way. And it's the coolest thing. It happens to be a pattern that I identified. It's, a, it's unique to my system, the parameters that I use very specifically for that pattern to form out there. And in this case, in price, it, it, it does require part of the work of J. Wells Wilder, uh, but not the way that he teaches it. Uh, but price, in this case, you're moving higher, doing less relative energy. So it's not the crash of 87 that is what's important because it doesn't identify, identify crashes. Instead, it identifies market tops and market bottoms. Sometimes they last longer than others. Sometimes they lead to uh, big market corrections. Sometimes it's small market corrections. But the thing is, is that they are present at the beginning of every single major bear market that has ever existed. They're not always at the bottoms, although many times they are present at the uh, bottoms. And you and I, you've become a aficionado with regard to this pattern, Stevie's price relative strength divergent pattern. You will see this is a chart going back, daily chart, by the way, of the Dow, going back into October of 1987. As the high was being made out here, it actually was taking place in August. So the identifier took place with regard to a market top 
back in August. Prices moving higher, doing less relative energy. The uh, cavalry arrives, nice little dark cloud cover. Two days prior was a nice little bearish engulfing candle. You got Stevie's red line out here. You can see where price is, was when uh, we have the uh, crash took care place out here. It was below Stevie's red line. You can see the price oscillator at the zero level, how important that is. We don't like falling price oscillators below zero. Bad things can and often do happen when that occurs out here. So here's the pattern that was present before the crash of 87, okay, back in August of 1987. That is muy importante. If we take a look at the week, that was a daily chart. Here's the weekly chart taking us back into August. This here weekly is going to have more meaning than a daily. You can see we also had the weekly pattern out here. You can see the cavalry arriving here with the nice bearish engulfing candles. This is bearish, sash, bearish engulfing the combo. Here's Stevie's red line on the uh, weekly basis. We can see we got the topping signal. You get some confirmation by moving down below Stevie's red line. That's an oscillator and change line out here. And so the, pre the pattern was present that identifies every single significant or even insignificant market top and most of the bottoms that are out there flash forward to today 22970 this snapshot was taken earlier this morning on a daily chart as you and i are looking at it are uh, is that major topping pattern present no so don't take the earlier read with regard to the advanced decline information and the fact that we're looking at potentially turn around Tuesday, turn around to the downside out here based on the nice little nuances that you and I are looking at to mean that we're going to see some type of major uh, crash. Well, I'm not going to ever. I, can't, I don't know the pattern present when crashes occur. I, I, w I haven't really spent enough time. There are so few of them, so to speak. I'd rather know the patterns that are present at the beginning of bull and bear mark bear market specifically or where markets are going to go ahead and make some type of turn to the downside then you're just identifying levels of support is it present today on a daily basis no so why should i have spent any time on it yesterday it's really not out there well maybe maybe just maybe but if we take a look at the weekly chart here for the dow you'll also see that on a weekly basis that pattern is not present uh, at all. So it's not really pertinent. Uh, we can go ahead and reminisce and go back to 1987 if you'd like, but it's not going to do you a whole heck of a lot of good other than to know the pattern that was present and then to know, hey, it's not present at the moment. Again, we'll take a look at the cash indice. And here, as another example for you, here's the 1929 bear market. This is a monthly chart. We looked at the daily and the weekly. Well, here's a monthly chart. The pattern is really present on the monthly time frames when you take a look at these bear markets. Same pattern that was present. Do we have one here today? The answer is no, we do not. And that is the reason you and I didn't spend too much time on that yesterday. But, hey, let's face it, we just spent some time on it as we speak right now. Now, with regard to the ES Mini out here, if we take a look at it, we can see that price has been rising, doing it with less relative energy. Cavalry trying to show up, not yet been able to totally show up so they're just waiting for more reserves to uh, to arrive i don't know if they're going to arrive today it would be cool if they did if we get a close below yesterday's open inside the es mini that would uh, suggest to you and i that we could see a decline into the 2495 level what happens if the cavalry doesn't arrive you don't have a confirmation without a confirmation price can continue to move higher so we've got the uh, presence of a number of different patterns you and i don't ignore them because they are so helpful in our assessment as to what is going on inside the market and those are the things that you and i are focused on i don't see any questions that have come in nothing in the den very quiet out there maybe it's just me and i that are actually uh, doing or listening to the uh, show out here so we'll just continue to mosey along little cowboy if we take a look at the mosey along what do we want to take a look at here probably goldilocks now we saw a nice decline thus far in gold a bit too much of a decline in gold and the question is this is a 30 minute chart which by the way on a 30 minute chart when gold topped yesterday 
at about 9 o'clock, 8.30 in the morning. Was price moving higher, doing with less relative energy? Oh, my gosh, Steve-O. So it was. Now what we can see is earlier this morning at about 11.30 to be specifically, well, we actually saw price beginning to move lower, doing with less relative energy out here. The first time you got a, a potential for a bullish signal was out here on uh, six, at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, even though it was a hammer candle, it was still below, uh, in essence, Stevie's red line on the TAS market profile, TAS profiles for the 30-minute basis. So it's not like your skirt could get into a tizzy. Maybe we're going to go to a leg G to the downside on the 30-minute basis. I don't know. Here's what I do know. On a 30-minute time frame, we do not have a bullish reversal signal just yet. Are we going to get one by 2 o'clock? I don't know. 3 o'clock? I don't But stay tuned. I'll let you know when we do. Steve Rook, TF. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, looks like uh, Trump and the uh, the uh, somebody from Greece, the ambassador to Greece, are going to come out there. Oopa! Uh, they're not out there yet. Maybe a little Saganaki, a little Sadziki, maybe even a little Uzo out there. But in the meantime, we've got Ron from Denver on the phone. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing? Hi. Uh, good, Steve. Uh, Ron, I just wondered if you'd give me a 
uh, a short-term horizon uh, on IYK. I, I own some puts that expire Friday. I think he's out there. I'll let the uh, studio figure that out. And uh, we'll go take a look at, I've uh, got a question here from James. James writes in. Uh, ALB. He says, uh, would like to know your opinion on ALB. That's uh, Al B. Marl. Uh, they were downgraded not long ago by one company. Now they're upgraded by another. I'm not in, but wondering about a trade in this long. Uh, thank you. Have a great day. And uh, you have a great day, too. He's talking. I don't hear anybody. Yes, yes. can you hear me? Ah, oh, there we are. are. Okay, Ron. Good. Thanks. Sorry about that. I could not hear no, okay. you. Don't know why, but uh, now that we've got you live, that's great. You wanted to take a look at the uh, transportation indice or the ETF for it, IYT. So tell me what you're yeah. doing, how I can help. Well, I, I own puts that expire Friday. Okay. Um, <laughs> the next couple of days. Good. Today in the good. next couple of days. Okay, well, uh, I like the trade. Uh, this looks like it wants to continue to move lower. My longer-term price target, not by day, but price target, is about the 9,500 area. It's trading right now at 98.14. Gave a beautiful topping signal because it completed uh, two patterns out here, an A to B equals CD to the upside, and price was moving higher, doing less relative energy, and he had a good old bearish engulfing candle that showed up on Friday. Follow through yesterday and some additional follow through today. What I'm looking at on the daily chart, something that occurred overnight or this morning, was a brand new market profile. So 177.16 is the bottom of that profile. We're trading below that. This says to me that price wants to move lower. Where that price is going to be, you know, Friday, Thursday night, that I don't know. But it does look like you are on the correct side of this trade. Okay, well, I'll see what, what happens over the next day or two and try and try and catch it when it's weak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I appreciate that. I just, uh, yeah. I'll just i let you go. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Thanks for calling. Sorry that we had that technical glitch out there. And uh, best of luck on shorting the transportation. That's uh, done by the IYT out there. Now let's go back to the LB Marl. Uh, trade question that was out here and uh, so the question was should you go long ticker symbol ALB out here and if we take a look at it what did oh I switched uh, I switched workspaces give me a moment here to come back this one here so if you just take a look at today's chart that's the one on the left hand side now we're going to make it the full screen what we can see is we do see a bearish reversal candle today and as we and now we can all see the price came back and tested the top of its daily profile. That daily profile, uh, let's give you the uh, top, and that is 138.98. So even though we really do have a topping signal, the reason I say that, just like Ron and I were taking a look at the IYT, the transports. In this case here, I don't have today's data as not being fed into this system right now. Why, I don't know. Uh, I think it has something to do with my Skype or something along those lines. But in any event, that being the case, we know the pattern is present. Price has been moving up, doing less relative energy out here, getting a bearish reversal signal today. We're below Stevie's red line out here, uh, which is at about the 14016 area. So uh, all looks good for this to pull back. So the answer, should you go long, the answer is no. What you should try to do, if we're fortunate enough, First, you need to see this get below and inside the DAS profile. That's below 138.98. If you do that, now you've got an opportunity to take a look at what happens at the price level of 133.37. As we speak today on October 17th, the buy point on here would be about 133.17. You'd like to see volume, I would say, somewhere less than 2.6 million shares less than 2.1 million shares. If that's the case, that could be a good buy point. On a weekly basis, shoot, the buy point is so far below, which is the top of its weekly box, 121.51. Not sure if that is what you are going to get. Could you go long? You could, but I would prefer not to see those topping patterns that you and I just to, took a look at. I'd rather see it go long on a pullback. And so we're going to stick with uh, ticker symbol ALB, Al B. Marl, as a buy at about 133.37.
We've got Tarpon, too. He wants to take a look at NRG. He or she, I apologize. NRG wants to go ahead and take a look at uh, what? A long position. Are you long, Tarpon, too? Or are you looking to get long? That would be helpful. As we take a look at it, that stands for NRG Energy out here. NRG. I'm going to put it on my other chart system as well. See what we have. I don't have much. So let's go take a look at the daily charts out here. We'll take a look at swing points, such as the swing point from August 22nd. That had 6.4 million shares out there. Has that been taken out with volume, such as in yesterday? And the answer is no. 5.4 million shares. So you don't have any conviction necessarily out here, Tarpon 2. That does not mean you're long by a calls at uh, 26 and you're at 2627 as we speak. The question is, is this thing going to continue to move higher? As I was saying, doesn't have the conviction from the standpoint of taking out its swing point. If it did, that'd be a nice A to B equals CD to the upside. And I don't know when your calls expire. So, um, but we don't have anything that says that this is going to take the pedal off of the metal, so to speak. You would if this were to close back below 2606. Below 2606, we'll set up a likely run to 2462. I don't have a major topping pattern. I don't have a minor topping pattern. I don't have any topping pattern. Today's not a bearish reversal signal to be worried about, and but we have taken out a swing point with light volume. That really is about how we can best look at it. If I look at a weekly and monthly chart out here on the weekly chart, the volume was, uh, which was a bearish reversal signal. Here's the price point to be paying attention to. It is the week or the high of August 21st, 2017. That is 2625 or 2628. Three pennies. They do make all the difference in the world. Volume this week, 8.4 million shares versus 32 million shares. Kind of early for me to be doing that kind of math computation. Um, but so I can't tell you whether that's with or without with or without uh, volume. But if price closes below 26.25, just telling you you've got the PS de resistance and it may not make it much higher than that out there. And that is ticker symbol NRG, which stands for NRG energy out there. Okie dokie. Um, I might as well just check here real quickly in case see if anybody else uh, wrote in. And uh, I don't see any other uh, any other requests out here. So what do we want to look at? Well, we looked at a short term chart for gold, and I know that you probably want more information. So what information can I provide you with? I'll think about that, and I'll have it ready when we come back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got, uh, what do we have? The Dow's up about 14 points, and we've got a caller on the line. We've got Ray in Sarasota. Ray, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Doing well, Steve. Excellent. Are you a longtime uh, resident of the Sarasota area? Uh, Ten years, permanently. Oh, okay, great, great. You guys have that great uh, unconditional surrender, surrender statue, I believe, right in the center of the... Uh, of uh, St. Armand Circle, don't you? Well, it's uh, down at uh, the Marina Front, and ah, the it's a real front. tourist okay. uh, attraction. Yes, it is. It is. All righty. You want to take a look at uh, Lithium Global X uh, Lithium and Battery Technology. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Tell me what you're doing, how I I'm can help. I'm looking to build kind of a longer-term position, and, and I'm thinking about starting to buy around $38 and uh, maybe more around 35 and a half and maybe even additional shares around 33. Okay. Get there. Sure, sure. Okay, so let's take a look at what it's doing right now. And we're going to do that uh, simply by taking a look at the daily chart. And the very first thing that I noticed is the uh, big candle session from September 20th which was a key reversal, bearish engulfing, price had opened up higher, traded out, uh, traded uh, lower throughout the day. And what that did at 39.83 was set up our first level of resistance. The very first time that this was tested was on October 5th. That was 1.5 million shares going against 2 million shares. So lighter volume as it came into a very clear resistance area. It failed. Price didn't pull back, but really for one day. Yesterday, you try, and you had a nice little bear sash candle, by the way, on October 6th, really confirming the resistance level out here. Yesterday, you try, in fact, you actually close above that uh, resistance level, and it creates one of those little um, hanging man candles, which they say is bearish, and it is bearish, but I kind of, on the bearish side, put it at about a 1 out of 10 as far as bearishness. Nonetheless, bearish candle signal up where the other ones are. And so the pullbacks that you should be looking for, if this were to pull back, would be 38.22. I think you said 38. So congrats there. 37.19, if it gets below 38.22. And then 36.84, if you were lucky. That's looking at the daily chart. I think I heard you say you were looking to build kind of a longer term position in this. Is, is, this, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, so... The weekly charts uh, right now give me about the 38.12 level. So you've got a couple of 38s, 38.12, 38.22. Below 38.12, then you're in the 36 type range. So 
If that's what I see on the charts as we speak. You're up at resistance. It hasn't cleared it. If it does clear that level, especially if it were to clear, by the way, the level is uh, 3983. If we're to do that with volume of more than 2 million shares, then this thing would be breaking out again and uh, giving you a nice little A to B equals CD to the upside. But I believe you are on the correct track. And right now, I would try to buy this thing as it pulls back and use some of either the levels I gave you or the ones that you've identified. Seems to me like you're doing a good job of tracking it. Great. Thank you very much, Steve. Hey, you bet. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling in. That was Ray in beautiful Sarasota. Uh, so I mentioned gold uh, before, uh, before Ray had called, and I said I would figure out what is it that we should be looking at out here. And there's a couple of things, really. Uh, the first is, yesterday we saw the classic test that you and I were expecting. What is that? We talked about it yesterday, which was price was eventually going to come back and test TV's red line. Right now it's priced at 1291.80. We're trading at 1286.80. So we're below it by five buckaroonies. I don't, yesterday was a rejection of Stevie's red line. It was giving us the potential of a bullish signal. Now, overnight, now as we speak at 146, it's given us the potential of a bearish signal. The possibility that uh, there was just a little counter trend rally, about a 50% counter trend rally. And that gold really wants to do is get down to 1208.80. That is actually the message as long as gold continues to trade below Stevie's red line. What's the number? 1298, 1291.80 that you would want to be looking at. Now, what's the likelihood that that was just a counter trend rally? And the only thing that I can do is go back and take, well, look at both sides of this trade out here, is go back and take a look at this chart, which you and I haven't done for both really gold and silver, but we're just going to focus on gold. And this is taking a look at the uh, commercial positions as a percentage of open interest percentage. And that's what you see in panel number two out here. You see that when the percentages get up lately, in this uh, 54 percentile-ish range, we didn't actually get up there, but it's 45 to 50-ish percent out here. It is where we have so what what was basically occurring is commercial traders. Who are those? The big, the big name players out there. Well, the the supposed smart money versus like the little guys, which they refer to as the non-reportable group of traders, which pretty much most of us here at TFNN qualify for. We don't take it personally. We just know they have to categorize us somehow. In this case here, the large commercial traders, the last time that we saw a decent top or pullback was back on the week of April 22nd, 2017. You'll see the little red arrows. We then saw price come back and test that area back on June, uh, June 10th of 2017. You can see that commercial traders basically maintain the same type of net short position. They're always net short out here. Uh, they're always net short because of uh, futures contracts being sold forward with regard to production. That's my presumption out here. Can't prove it, but, but I can't prove that they're always net short. So that seems to to be about as logical. And as price was making its most recent high back on September 8th, was really the following week when they got all the way back up to their, in essence, high net short interest area. And ever since then, certainly last week, uh, what we didn't see was we didn't see anybody letting off of the gas. In other words, commercial traders are still expecting and anticipating that gold will decline. They have been, in essence, anticipating that, if you will, since April 22nd. We haven't exactly seen a lot of decline. But if you were to ask me, hey, Steve-O, what are commercial traders doing? They're still anticipating that gold is going to decline now. What's going against those guys? You know, what's going against those guys, so to speak, as we speak right now, really two things. The Japanese yen, and I didn't think it was going to do it, but it actually did do it, which was it got down almost to Stevie's red line, close enough for our game. And price got down there. If the if gold were really going to break to the downside, if we're going to do it right now, I'd expect that we would see the yen also 
break to the downside. And that would be just like Doble Guy confirmation, even with the hammer candle we saw two, four, six, seven trading sessions ago. So it looks to me like we're at least going to see some type of intraday counter trend rally. And that was brought to us by the message of that simply that 30 minute chart that you and I were looking at. We're just waiting for some type of bullish reversal signal to confirm that. While as we speak right now, there's still 10 minutes to go. But here is the bullish engulfing candle session. I don't know if that's how it's going to close in 10 minutes, nine and a half minutes out here. But if it does, that's going to be our signal to watch 1288.90. You get above that, we're going to see gold rally. And then that says, well, shoot, if you rally, do you get back above Stevie's red line, which keeps things short term bullish? That's looking at both sides of the trade. Watch 1291.8 for that message. Hope you're ready. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Folks, uh, I got a request here from Paul, writes in, wants to take a look at uh, an opinion on uh, stock ticker EXTR. And this is the extreme networks out here, short and long position. If we take a look at the EXTR, you're going to see that this had what looks like a bit of an exhaustion gap out here, just a bit tired. It is the third gap, fourth gap that I see. It uh, doesn't look like the largest, so we're not going to call that one a three-gap play. Nonetheless, exhaustion, 
uh, is the best that we can call it as this broke out back on October 3rd. Nice volume, by the way, 3 million shares. Now what has happened here, uh, Paul, is this has pulled back into what could be or should be a level of support, 1167. So the long position would be that this area holds. That's the bottom of its TAS daily box. That profile has a bullish structure, centers closer to the bottom. Would you take that long trade today? No, I wouldn't. I'd like to see some type of bullish candle signal out here. And we also had volume kind of increase a bit yesterday, 1.6 million shares. It's taken its foot off the gas pedal today. Watch it. Because if price closes below 1167, the daily chart says you could come all the way down to the last breakout area from August 15th. Don't know that you will, but could 1069-ish, uh, 1005-ish, uh, maybe even lower. But before you would get down there, it would be the week. Oh, I take that back. The weekly profile say it is possible to get back to 1007, and the monthly says uh, 1035. Uh, at this stage, what should you do? Well, first is a $10 stock, so you're going to take short off the table. You're not even going to think about it. You're going to just simply throw that whole idea out. You will never, ever, promise me, raise your right hand and repeat after me. Steve-O, I will never short a $10 stock. This is a stock. This is not an ETF or something like that. I will never do that. So that means, in this case, you're only looking for an entry. And I would say you want to wait to see some type of uh, bullish reversal signal. That is ticker symbol EXTR. And that was for Paul. Thanks so much for listening in today, folks. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear in mind, David White, is up next. This could be Turnaround Tuesday. And we'll go take a look at it on wonderful Wednesday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.